In this lesson, we're going to talk about how to prove the formula that gives you the sum of an arithmetic series. Now, before we do that, let's talk about an arithmetic sequence versus an arithmetic series. Here's an example of an arithmetic sequence. The numbers 5, 8, 11, 14, 17, and so forth. The first term, a sub 1, is 5. The second term, a sub 2, is 8. The common difference between them is 3. To go from the first term to the second term, you got to add 3. And then to get the next term, you got to add 3 again. 8 plus 3 is 11. 11 plus 3 is 14. So that is known as the common difference. The sequence is simply a list of numbers. When you add that list of numbers, you get a series. So let's say we want to calculate the sum of the first six terms. This would be s sub 6. So it's going to be 5 plus 8 plus 11 plus 14 plus 17. So that gives us a sum of 55. Now we could also calculate that sum using this formula. It's the sum of the first and the last terms divided by 2 times n. So basically, this part here means that it's the average of the first and the last term. The first term is 5. The last term in this sequence, a6, actually, that's, I take that back, that's a sub 5, rather. We're adding 5 terms, not 6. Mistakes happen, but it's good to catch them. So the fifth term, that's 17, divided by 2. and then times n, n is 5. Now the average of 5 and 17, that's going to give you the middle number 11. 5 plus 17 is 22, 22 divided by 2 is 11, and then 11 times 5 is 55. And we can see that these two answers match. So this formula gives you the partial sum of an arithmetic series. Now let's talk about how we can derive that formula. So S sub n is the sum of the terms in an arithmetic series. It's A sub 1, the first term, plus the second term, A sub 2, plus the third term, A sub 3. And this can keep on going until we get the last term in the series. Now, the second term, we know it's the first term plus the common difference. In a previous problem, the first term was 5. If you add a common difference of 3, you get the next term 8. So a sub 2, we can write that as a sub 1 plus d. Now, if we want to get the third term from the first term, we need to add two common differences. 3 minus 1 is 2. So the third term is going to be a sub 1 plus 2d. And then this pattern will continue to repeat until we get to the last term. So this expression is based on writing the sum from left to right. Now we're going to write the sum formula from right to left in the next line. So we're going to start with the last term first. So s sub n is also a sub n plus. Now the second to last term is going to be this but minus one common difference. So it's a sub n minus d. Now the third from the last term is going to be a sub n minus 2d. And then that pattern will continue to repeat as we go all the way to the first term a sub 1. Now we're going to add these two equations. So let's put a plus sign. s sub n 
plus s sub n, that's going to be 2 times s sub n. Here we have a sub 1 plus a sub n. I'm going to put it in parentheses. Then if we add these two, notice that d cancels with negative d, and we get a sub 1 plus a sub n. Now, if we add these two, 2d and negative 2d will cancel. And so we're left with a sub 1 plus a sub n. And this pattern will continue until we add the last two terms, which is also a sub 1 plus a sub n. Now, we need to factor out the GCF on the right side. The GCF, the greatest common factor, is clearly a sub 1 plus a sub n. The question is, how many a sub 1 plus a sub n do we have? Would you say it's 3, 4, 5, 20, 36? The answer is we have n terms of these things. So if we factor out a sub 1 plus a sub n, we'll be left with n. Next, we need to divide both sides by 2. And so that's how we can derive the formula for the sum of an arithmetic series. It's the first term plus the last term divided by 2 times n.